Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeanette Fryer. I am the owner and maker of Jabelle Sheet. So today we have a very fun tumbler to make. I'm going to be using some retro vinyl and some really, really pretty bright red and yellow glitter. And I really think it's going to be a very fun tumbler. So to start off, there has been a lot of questions about my channel and if I would create a Facebook group. So comment down below if you would like to join my Facebook group. It's gonna be a group where we can all just come together and share our creative ideas and you know just, just get inspiration from others in the group as well. So comment down below if that would be something you would be interested in. So um, I think that is enough for me. But before we get into the video, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing to my channel. There is going to be a lot more interesting content coming along with the new Facebook group that I'm going to be creating within the next week or two. So let's get into the video. But hey, but before we get into the video, please don't forget to click that notification bell so you won't miss out any of my future content. All right, so let's do it. So we are back. So let's get this tutorial started. So here I am starting with a fully prepped and sanded 20 ounce skinny from Dope and Crafty. I have went ahead and painted it yellow since the majority of my tumbler will be yellow. I also taped off the top and also left some of the silver portion exposed at the bottom because when I put my vinyl there, I want some of the silver to be showing. Um, so for this tumbler, we're going to be using Capella by PDB for the yellow, Red by Scorpio by PDB as well, and also another yellow called Crushed Apple by Southern Girl Glitz. All right, so the bottle that I'm gonna be using is this really pretty red retro lips. And I've, I've had this bottle for a while. I cannot recall where I got it from. However, I'm gonna look back through my purchasing notes and see if I can recall where I got this bottle from. So for this tumbler, I'm going for a really fun retro um, look vibe. And I just thought this was a really fun pattern to do a tumbler of. So in order to cut my vinyl, I am going to use my trusted T-square. It's just a T-square I got off Amazon. Um, if you would like to know more about it, I will leave the link in the description box below. So what I'm doing here is just trying to figure out where I want my vinyl to end. And it's always better to cut off more than enough than not to have enough. That's my rule of thumb. All right, so I'm just trying to measure. I don't want to use too much of it. So I think I'm gonna cut about there. So I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and just run it along the edge of the T-square. T-ruler, whatever you call it. We have our piece. So sometimes it doesn't cut all the way through, so I like to apply a lot of pressure. So what I am going to do is take my tumbler and line it up. So I want the lips to be going down this way. Um, so we're just gonna try to line it up and get it aligned as smoothly as possible. So take your time in this process, don't rush it. It's just you, even when I'm doing a video, I try to take my time and just not rush the process. Excuse my head if y'all see it in the video. Like I've said plenty of times before, when you craft it at nighttime, it is not pretty. Hey, we in bed clothes and hair covered up and everything, so let's just keep it real. But I love creating these tutorials, so I'm just gonna roll with it. All right, so what I'm doing here is just when I'm placing the vinyl, just trying to keep it as bubble free as possible. <coughs> so it's still on the, on the backing sheet. So I'm just trying to 
move it a little bit as along and then I'm just pressing the bubbles out as I go. And a good rule of thumb, I like to just use my thumbs. That just kind of helps me push the vinyl off of the backing sheet. It keeps it moving. And since this is a straight tumbler, we should end up somewhat in a straight line. But if it's not, it's going to be perfectly fine because you're going to see what we're going to do in the next couple steps. lined up it's not so straight there but hey that's fine because we're gonna cut that we're gonna cover that up so I'm taking I'm simply just taking and going back over it and when I get to the bottom I'm just pulling it because I don't want any wrinkles when I do my I don't want any wrinkles when I cut off the excess All right, so I'm gonna pull it. Once I have it pulled, I'm just gonna fold it over. I'm just making sure it is wrinkle free as possible. All right, so next we, even before I cut the, even before I cut the excess off right here, I'm gonna go in with my, my edge cutting tool and just cut off the excess from the bottom. It just makes it easier for me. So, with this tool, I'm just gonna press and turn. And I've already set it, because I've used it multiple times, I've already set it as to where I want the, the height to be for the cutout portion. So I just twist and turn and add as much pressure as I can. And I normally do about two passes just to make sure I get a, coat, a clean and crisp cut. All right, so that should just about do it. So we are going to, I apologize if I got out of frame there. We are going to just take our scissors just remove the excess and you see we have a good crisp clean line all right so next we are going to take off this excess right here where the seam is overlapping so Just press it down real firmly because I want to see where it ends at. And I'm just going to take some electrical tape. And what I do is just place it just a tad behind that seam. Where I see the seam stopping at, I just place it a tad behind it. All right, so once I have that done, I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and just run it along this electrical tape. Make sure you're applying some pressure because you wanna get a nice clean cut. And when I think I have it just about right, I'm just gonna take this from the opposing end and pull it off. And there we go. A nice seam. So it's not seamless. Of course, you would never get it seamless, but hey, it works, okay? So let's move on into creating the line for the red portion. That portion, I'm actually gonna use some electrical tape again and I'm just gonna go 
ahead and cut a piece that I think will fit what I need to fit. And what I'm doing is just creating a template so when I place the red glitter, it is just going to give me a template as to where I want that glitter to be placed. Alright, so I'm just taking the electrical tape and as I'm placing it, I'm just turning my tumbler, just trying to get it as straight as possible. along that line as straight as possible. All right, so once we have that done, we will cut off the excess and then we will move on to placing the yellow glitter at the top in the next step. All right, so we are back. I do want to mention that um, before going on to the next step, I went back to the vinyl and just applied another um, piece of um, electrical tape because I don't want any red glitter to get into this portion, if you get what I'm saying. But I just thought that I should cover that up so when I do the red glitter, it's not going down there and I have a seamless line because I did notice that there was a little bit of jaggedness and I just wanted it to be as straight as possible so that's just gonna help me that's, that's just the method that's always that I've always used and it really works for me so I just taped off this this electrical tape is just on top of the bottle and then this right here will remove the yellow glitter this will be the section that we will put the red glitter in so for, to apply the glitter for the yellow we're gonna be using crystal um, crystal like glitter glue adhesive so sometimes I like to use the epoxy method, but when I just have a really simple tumbler, I'm not saying this is simple, but for the yellow glitter, it's really not chunky. It's kind of almost fine. So this should work really well. All right. So we're just gonna take the glitter glue and then just apply a little bit on the tumbler. And I'm just gonna take a brush Just smooth it out and you want to make sure that it is kind of really smooth no no thick patches anywhere if you get what I'm saying Just make sure that you get up to the edge of the electrical tape so everything is all nice and has a has a nice coat of glue there so everything is will be nice and covered when you do your glitter so I'm just going back over and just smoothing out the glitter glue This stuff works really well but I'm still not done using my epoxy method it just depends on what type of mood I, I'm in as to which type of method I use for my adhesive because when I use the epoxy method I have to let it dry before I can move on to another step so I kind of want to progress with this tumbler a little faster. All right, so we have our glitter glue. So I'm going to start off with the crushed pineapple. 
and I don't know I just like the way it covers so I'm just gonna spread that on here a little bit doesn't have to have a good coverage because we're gonna go back and over it with the Capella by PDB All right, so I just hit the bottom of my tumbler and just hit the heck out of it and just get as much as this glitter off. Huh? All right, so next, in order to apply the Capella over the previous glitter that we used, we're gonna actually use some White Rain Extra Hole Hairspray. And this just allows me to apply a second coat of glitter to my tumblers without allowing the first coat to dry. This has always worked for me. So I think I mentioned that I use this in one of my um, very first videos. So this is a really good thing that I actually like to do. So my trash can is to the right over here. I'm just gonna take this off to the side and cover it really well with this hairspray and we'll get going. good coverage there so I just sprayed it so next we're gonna go in with the Capella and I'm just gonna use my sprinkler for this step because I don't want it to be a whole lot going on so we're just taking this and just applying it over that previous color and you can see that it is sticking that hairspray, I don't know, it just, that's my go-to. I use hairspray for every tumbler that I that I do to get a second coat. And y'all, it, you don't have to stop to, to allow that first coat to dry, you just, you just keep it moving. So if you need a second coat, hit that tumbler with some hairspray and just keep it moving. So once again, we're just gonna take the tumbler Take the bottom of it and just hit the heck out of it. Huh? All right, so before moving on to letting this yellow dry, we're just gonna take a baby wipe and just pat down this glitter. I don't know. Lately, I just been start liking to pat down all my glitter. I don't know, it just seems to make me use less coats of epoxy before applying the decal. So we're just patting this down. Making sure you get up to the edge. So when we, once we pull this tape, we have a good crisp line going on. All right, so before we move the tape, I'm just gonna take my finger and just go along the top and just press that down. And then go along the bottom and press this down as well. And remember I said I'm gonna keep that piece of um, electrical tape there at the bottom before we remove it. All right, so let's remove this portion, the top portion tape first. And you see we have a crisp line. Um, so next let's take the this portion off. And we have another crisp line. So Work really well. I think the yellow has a really good coverage up there just the way I want it. 
and it is looking good so far. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let this dry for a couple hours. I'm gonna hit it a couple times with two times back clear by Rust-Oleum, and then we're gonna move on to the next set. We'll put in the red stripe here. All right, so stick with me. All right, we'll be back. Ready to apply the red stripe to the tumbler. So what I have here is some Orteza paint, and it is scarlet red, and the Scorpio glitter by PB. So I'm gonna take a little of my glitter glue, and I'm not gonna need much. Probably that's a little too much. And just a little of this red paint. And I'm just gonna use the red paint as sort of like my base color for the red glitter so I don't have to apply so many coats of glitter. All right. Up in there. So it is gonna act like an adhesive and a glue, an adhesive and a base color at the same time. All right, so we're gonna mix that up. Next. Um, off camera, I have taped my tumbler off with some frog tape and this just helps me to keep glitter from going into the bottle and the yellow portion as well. I am not well at keeping my glitters from going into other colors. So for me, this just works really well when I tape it off on those sections, okay? We are going to take the paint and just apply it in this section. But glitter glue, I meant, I meant. I am not finding my words today. Okay. Get a good and even coverage of the glitter glue, glue mixed with the Arteza paint. It's too much because I am definitely not gonna need all of that. So next time I know, just a tad. to make sure I don't have any lumps anymore. Okay. So we are gonna take our glitter tray and apply our red glitter to that section. pretty red, like a rich color red, and I really like it. All right, I think I'm just gonna spray it with the hairspray just to make sure so this is my hairspray so i'm just going to spray it with the hairspray just to make sure i got everything covered it really doesn't look like it needs it but i just want to make sure everything is good to go so i'm just taking this off to the side and i'm just spraying the hairspray over my trash can So I got that all covered. So we're just gonna go in with another light coat. So when I'm gonna do light coats, I kinda just use my sprinkler. So I'm not just getting so much on there. We're 
we're gonna be good to go with this coat. See, I'm clumsy y'all. That's why I take my stuff off. Just imagine if that had fell in the red glitter, I would have red glitter all in that yellow. So, thankfully it was taped off. As a tumbler maker, you know your strengths and you know your weaknesses, and I definitely know mine. I am so, so clumsy. All right, so once again, as always, I'm just gonna take a baby wipe and I'm just gonna pat that glitter down in that section. So, just a light pat. I get really crisp lines when I remove the tape. Are ready to take the tape off. And let's hope we get the results that we're looking for. Let me move this out the way just in case my toe wants to fall again. Oh my god. I had that electrical tape still on there from the previous step. So let's take the tape off of the top. And here we go. A pretty bright red stripe going on. So I am going to let this dry. Um, and then I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna let it dry and then seal it with two times matte clear. Then I'm going to two very thin coats of epoxy before we move on to our decal process. All right, so see you soon. I was about to clean up my desk before I moved on to putting the tumbler on the turner. And I thought I'd share this little device that I got off Amazon. It's actually like a small little desk vacuum and it works really well. Um, so you're probably gonna hear it start going here, but as you can see, it's just picking up all of that glitter, all of that red glitter that I thought I had contained, <laughs> but it was not contained. So when I work, I really like to keep, when I work, I really like to keep a clean surface area. Um, that's just the way I like to work, but I will share the link to this product on, in the description box below. All right, thank you guys. We are back. So after applying two thin coats of epoxy, after we applied the red stripe, we are now on to, we are now ready to apply the decal. So before doing that, I also took the um, cup outside, sanded the top edges and the bottom edges, and also gave the entire cup a light wet sand as well just to get it nice and smooth. So the decal that I chose for this cup is Boss Babe. I thought it was really fitting for this cup because it's sort of retro vibe. That's the kind of look that I was going for with this cup. And also I cut some black lines about nine inches long and 0.125, I believe, wide. Just on Cricut, just using a Cricut shape. So I'm gonna use those lines to place the outline for the red stripe as well. So let's go ahead and put the decal on. So I just cut this decal and this, um, I found it on Etsy and I cut it, I sized it to around 2.75 by 2.75. So I'm just gonna use my little boss buddy here and I'm gonna find, I don't wanna put it where the seam is because the seam is in the back. So I kinda wanna put it directly behind the seam if you know what I mean. So I'm just gonna take this just kind of flip the cup over so I know that seam is in the back and kind of line up the decal. And I kind of just want it centered. Get that nice and centered. All 
the eye level so I can see where I'm placing the detail at. And I think that looks perfect. All right, so we're just gonna get that to go down and hopefully we won't have any issues trying to get this from the transfer paper. All right, so I'm just pressing it down with my fingers. Gotta clean my fingers off. Clean the cup with some alcohol, but it's still just a little bit. My fingers seem to be a little slippery. So, I'm just gonna get my scraper here and just scrape it. Just press it down really firmly. And we're just gonna pull back. Let me speak too soon. I think we may have a winner here. Let's see. It's on there and it looks pretty. It looks so pretty. All right, so next we're gonna take the stripes and I just thought the light accent around the red stripe will be very pretty and just try to finish the cup off with that. So since I want the end of the stripe to end in the back where the seam is, I'm just gonna take and put it around the back where the seam of the vinyl is just to kind of make it look seamless. And hopefully I cut it long enough. And I'm just spinning the cup. Just a tad too short, but that's fine because I'm gonna close that up with another piece of vinyl. It is so nice, ain't that pretty? All right, so we're gonna take the other stripe and we're gonna start in the same area that we did in the back. Spin in the cup and just making sure you kinda just keep it even as possible. So cute. I just thought the whole vibe with the lips and everything and the yellow and then the black stripe around the red just gave it a really retro vibe. So what I'm gonna do before I put this, the last coat of sealer uh, epoxy on here, I'm actually gonna seal this with um, two times matte clear by Rust-Oleum and also a, set, a very thin layer, layer of quick coat by CC DIY. And we're gonna apply two thin coats of epoxy on this and we should be on to finishing this tumbler. So stay with me you guys and we'll be back for the finished tumbler. Welcome back and once again, we are done with this tumbler. Y'all just look at how bright this yellow glitter is coming through and this red stripe. This vinyl is so fun. Um, like I said, I cannot recall where I got this from, so I'm gonna go back through my my mini purchase receipts and see if I can recall where I got this vinyl from, but it turned out amazing. So to finish it off, after we applied the decal, I did apply two thin coats of epoxy, and that was just enough. And it is giving me such retro vibes. I am definitely into the retro scene um, right now, so this is definitely my vibe. So it worked out really well. So I'm curious as to how you guys are gonna create a retro tumbler. So comment down below and let me know if you need any help in creating this. It was so simple. You see it didn't take us about, about four or five steps and we were done. So it turned out really, really pretty. So as always, I like to leave my videos or end my videos with a positive quote. The quote for today's video is, be the one who just decided to go for it. So. I say that to say this, if you're thinking about starting that small business or anything like that, don't sit on it. You know, just 
get up and do it because my my thing right now in 2022 is if now if not now when are you going to do it so this is the perfect time to start that small business whether it be making tumblers signs or anything of that nature just start it just go for it don't be afraid to start something new so like i said be your own be your own motivator be your own within inspiration within yourself and you never know what, what outcome will be if you don't if you don't never start so just start with it so like i said um within the next week or two i'm going to be starting a facebook group so comment like i said before comment down below if that would be something you would be interested in and let me know and i will get that started i will post a link to the facebook group uh, in my next video upload or I just may make a whole video about my Facebook group. So that is more to come. I am very excited about that. So if you have not subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing to my channel. And also don't forget to click that notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my future content. So until then, I will see you in the next one and stay blessed. Hey you guys, I forgot to mention that we have reached almost 800 subs on my channel and I can't begin to tell you how much the love and support means to my channel. You all are my biggest motivators to keep creating these awesome videos. So if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Also, if you liked this video, please don't forget to like and hit that notification bell so you won't miss out on any of my future content. Until then, stay blessed and continue crafting and I will see you in the next one.